Hello and welcome back to Oops to Awesome 2 with Julie Wirtle from Artfully You. And today I'm going to take you step by step on how to create a forest using analogous colours. Let's go! Okay. So these are the different names of different color schemes. These are the basic ones. So complementary, we talked about in our first Oops to Awesome course, um, when um, two colors are opposite on the color wheel, um, basically when they mix together, they can darken each other. If you mix them in, in equal amounts, they'll be net neutral and you'll get um, different types of browns depending on the two colors that you mix in. And then a split complementary is when you um, look at the color that's opposite, but you go either side of it. Um, so the split complementary of red, the complementary is green. The split complementary is green, yellow, and blue, green. And then a triad is when you just take the arms out slightly further. Um, and normally the equal distance from each other in kind of a clock face, if you imagine like, the hour hand, the minute hand, and the second hand. And then a tetrad um, is, doesn't have to be exactly a cross. Um, you can, if you imagine that, if you were to draw a square between those four points, you could also draw a rectangle between those four points. So you could have, see so here we've got, red and green, so the, the two opposites, and then we've got purple and yellow, but you could have red, miss one, then you could have the orange red, and then you could miss one, and then you could have yellow green, and then you could have, so you can have your tetrads, um, they don't, they don't have to be equally distant. You could just have, instead of two spaces in between, you could have one space in between on either side or two spaces and one space. So you can kind of mix it up a bit, but the idea is the, um, you either draw a square or a rectangle inside that circle. So inside the, um, and then analogous is when you have, you could have three or four, or I sometimes do five, colors all next to each other on the color wheel. So the analogous colors that we're going to be using um, today for today's painting, or you could choose for three or four other analogous colors, is um, all the greens. So um, I'm going to have yellow, yellow, green, green, and blue, green. So they're the ones that I'm going to use for this particular painting. Um, and I'm also going to be using blue in its pure form for the sky with a lot of white. Um, so it's all analogous colors, all next to each other on the color wheel. Um, if you wanted to make this a fall painting and have a little pop of color, you could throw in a complementary. So you could throw in a red um, just to kind of give it a little pop if you didn't want to keep to the analogous. So I want you to feel like you can have a bit of freedom with this, but it is an analogous exercise. Um, so this is kind of the composition we're going to be working on. I did put um, another version of this that I did in more of my kind of group of seven colors and more stylized. So instead of doing like the detail on the leaves, I blocked out the shapes. Um, I exaggerated the colors. Um, so it's just same picture, just a different variation of it. So, so you can see kind of semi-realism and then semi-abstract as two different styles using the same composition. This, these are the colors I'm going to be using, those three. Um, and then I'm going to be using paint gray and white. And we're going to imagine that, so I know I'm painting on square, so just imagine that if you're on a rectangle, then yours is yours is just, you're going to have a little bit more space at the top, that's all. So imagine you've got another kind of two inches at the top of your canvas to extend your trees. Um, so I'm going to start with white. Um, imagine that your canvas, if you're on a rectangular canvas, is divided into four. 
and the bottom quarter is where we're going to put our horizon line and we are going to start with white to start with I am adding a very small amount of blue and, you know, use whichever blue you want, but um, because I'm going to keep my color palette limited, I'm going to use the ultramarine that I'm going to use for all my greens. So the other one, everybody can see that. See, I kept this guy quite, quite pale, but as you can see, I used a different blue for the original painting for this guy. I think I either used cobalt or, or cerulean. I may have used cerulean actually. A long time ago. Okay, so can you see there's quite a lot of light in the leaves on the horizon line um, just before those big, big green bushes are? Um, so we're going to start with a very pale green and then we're going to transcend down. We are going to take the dark green all the way to the bottom and put the water in later because it's a little bit easier to just block it out for now. So have a quick look at that before I switch it over. Julie, did you say raw sienna is ochre plus Payne's gray or ochre plus ultramarine blue? I think it's ochre um, plus Payne's gray. Um, it, it's probably got a tiny bit of red in it as well. Um, because to make yellow ochre, you're basically mixing cadmium yellow and violet. Um, but if you have a look at my color strip, I kind of made, um, where's it gone? I couldn't tell uh, if that ochre is that color strip that ends in Payne's gray, not ultramarine blue, right? Yeah, so this ends in Payne's gray, but Payne's gray has ultramarine blue in it. Um, so paint gray is more of a blue version of black. Um, if you do a very thin layer of paint gray, you'll see the blue in it. It's like a blue black or a very, very dark navy blue. Um, so yeah, that's yellow ochre. The raw sienna is the second one. Um, and you can make it with paint gray. The reason why I'm hesitating on saying just add paint gray to yellow ochre to make raw sienna is because every time you add black, or paint gray to yellow ochre, it will start turning a green. You see how it gets greener as it goes down, just a tiny bit green. Um, so that's why I say you need kind of that red element because really adding purple would, would give you more of an accurate raw sienna because it's got, the purple's got that bit of red in it as well as the blue. Thank you. No worries. Okay. Okay, so we're going to have some fun with color mixing. Are you ready to have some fun? <laughs> okay, so let's refer back to our color strips that we made. 
last week. Okay, so I'm going to bring out. Um, I'm just going to show you the greens here. And then let's, if you have your color strips handy that you made, have a look at them. And, and this is a good way of using your color strips to, to try and find the recipe of how to make the greens. So um, looking at these three color strips, pop quiz, you tell me which, which, color which color combination should I use to make this green? So this one is cad yellow to ultramarine. This is cad yellow to paint gray. This is yellow ochre to paint gray. So this I think it's yellow ochre to paint gray. Yellow ochre to paint gray. This one? Yeah, about, I don't know, six or seven. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so let's put that one there next to the green. Anybody oh, else wanna, wanna try it? Oh, it's six. <laughs> yeah. so, so this is cad yellow to paint gray. So let's look at all of the sixes. It's a bit like going into one of those stores with the paint swatches. So have a look at this row here against the green. I'll leave a little space and then you can tell me which one you think is the closest. I know it's a little bit difficult with the camera. To me, the painting looks more blue green. The, yeah. the, so adding a bit of white, you know, to, or something to the, to the uh, one on the left. This one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So um, so it's, I used cad yellow and ultramarine to get this green. And yeah, you're right. There's a tiny bit of white in it as well. So 10 points to Susan, sorry. <laughs> 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 but, you know, it doesn't have to look like mine if you prefer one of the other combinations you can do. but. This is why these um, these little color swatches are so useful because when you are looking at analogous color scheme, if you keep these handy, um, this is why I took them all the way to the edge. So you can really put them right up against it. Because if you look at it with white behind it, it kind of looks different, you know? Um, but if you take it all the way up to the edge, you can really put it up against it and it helps you figure out what colors to use. And then these are like little recipe cards. You could have like a little roller deck or something. So, um, so yeah, so I'm gonna be using um, cadmium yellow and ultramarine and I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it. Um, do, you, do you want me to just throw out a little piece of trivia, Julie? Go for it, yeah. Um, we, when I was working, we were trying to come up with a standard cover for our business reports. Yeah. And it was sort of a, sh what they decided on was sort of this gradiated, like blue, green and green. And someone made the observation that almost 80% of males have some degree of color blindness in differentiating okay. greens and blue, greens and blues. So that what you're asking is not easy and to have more patience, particularly for the, the, the males in your life, if it comes to. So anyways, that was just a piece of trivia that somebody threw out when we were a design person. Yeah, that's so interesting that um, a lot of them that, yeah, the, the reds, greens and browns are kind of, you know, difficult. And I know, um, I, can women have color blindness? I know it's more of a male thing, but can women have it? I don't know that question, but I, yeah. I just knew about the difficulty differentiating yeah. blue, blue greens and blues and They're green. very subtle and also looking through the lens of a camera. So the light's different, you know, and, um, you know, and everybody's, everybody's uh, monitor is more, you know, if, you know, when you go into like a TV store and you see like 10 TV showing exactly the same show and they all look slightly different colors. So all of your monitors are picking up slightly different versions of these colors too. Um, so what may appear greener. So that's where I was saying like refer to your color strips because then you can go on what, what you have in front of you, you know, um, and which ones you like. 
Right, I'm gonna, I'm just trying to squeeze out the last little bit of my titanium white. I might have to cut this open because I'll say I'm, I'm using my neighbor's Wi-Fi today. Just out of curiosity, what art store told you to buy zinc white? Oh, it was Corey's and normally they're pretty good, but um, whoever served me in Corey's, I said, I've been using titanium white and they're like, oh no, you want to use zinc white? And I'm like, I'm not sure. But I didn't know anything about zinc white because I'd never used it before. So I bought it and I don't like it. It's so thin and transparent. And I say I got the golden, so I thought it would be a heavy body. <clears throat> oh well, you learn from it. But maybe I'll try it with the mixin and see see what happens. So so just just as a refresher for me, what did your instructor say that it does to the color? He he mixes it in every color, he, he, he's got a very strong, vibrant color style. Yeah. And he mixes zinc white in every color Another. because it makes it more vibrant. Oh, because it, oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll try it. I'll, I will and, try it and, and, he ha and he has a transparent, he's one of these styles where it's layer on layer on layer. Yeah. So, and he likes to paint very transparently. Right. So, um, adding zinc white just makes your paints appear more transparent. Right, okay. Whereas- Kind of dilutes them then, yeah. Yeah, it's almost like adding a matte medium in oh, some ways, yeah. Like a, yeah except, like... except he claims it makes the colors more vibrant. Whereas matte medium's neutral, it doesn't- Yeah. Change. Well, I'll give it a go. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to start on our horizon line. So I'm mixing a lot of this thing quite that I don't like because I've run out of titanium with a uh, yellow. Um, and I'm going to just create my horizon line. So I'm going to put my canvas on its side because it's always easier to do my horizon line on its side. I love how... Um, you know, we're all learning from each other and we've all got different experiences and we can all, we always come away with something new from uh, spending time with you all, which is so cool. Um, excuse me, Laura. Um, Julie, is it about a quarter of the way down our, yeah. I'm on a rectangular um, portrait. Yeah. It's um, about a quarter of the way down. So mine is just going to be, I'm just not going to have the top part because I'm on a square. So about a quarter of the way down. And what brush are you using? I am using a three quarter inch flat. Okay, thank you. No worries. So I'm doing a pale, pale yellow, which I will add to later. So on the value scale, you want it just kind of one value down from white. So not too yellowy, unless you want it more yellowy. Okay, so don't forget to give your brush a little bit of a wipe and your paper towel. And then we're going to start with our greens. We're going to start making some of our greens. So um, I'm going to get a generous amount of yellow and a little bit of my ultramarine. And I want to make quite a rich green. So a fair amount of ultramarine. I would say start with a little bit and keep adding it. So 
so. And I'm actually going to start at the bottom and transition up to that yellowy white that I made. So I'm going to start at the bottom and bring it up. Is this value about six? Let's see on the real thing. Um, yeah, about six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six. Thank you. No worries. I'm I'm starting to think now, um, Susan, how many companies that have a green logo and their the male employees don't see it as green. I'm, I'm trying to think what businesses have a green logo. T D bank. TD bank. Yeah. I think I think the issue with ours was the gradient green to blue. Right. You know, yeah, that it was, I mean, you can do it and everybody just sees it relative to their right. own. Yeah. So it's not like it's a traffic light, you know, where it's right, critical. Right, right. But yeah, you're right. If people are trying to have with all the environmental, you know, to have a color that looks environmental, it may. Right. Oh, an early dip my paintbrush and my lovely cappuccino that Alice made me. Not only is she letting me use her Wi-Fi and her dining room, she made me an amazing coffee too. So although I don't want a harsh line between my green and yellow, I also don't want too much of a blend because I want to really show this light shining through. So I'm going to do a very subtle transition. I'm going to make it a little bit, um, the yellow is going to be narrower on the left-hand side because my light's coming down from the top left hand corner like this like kind of almost corner to corner now the lights on the originals a little bit different because this was my first ever plain air painting when i was still a student nicole's one of nicole's cats and um I was, the light was moving constantly because I spent the whole day painting it. So that's the only challenge of doing plain air. You have to deal with the light moving. I did want to do a plain air group this summer, but it never really happened. Problem with the summer is it's too darn hot and then it gets to this time yeah, and it's a bit cool <laughs> the painting okay every time i think about it the more i have an appreciation for the group seven and how much live painting they did mind you they painted in oil which yeah. doesn't it doesn't dry on i i did a watercolor plein air and literally the paint was dry on the brush yeah know, in the in the 18 inches to go yeah. from the palette to the surface <laughs> it was the dry the brush it was noon and it was hot and yeah. i could remember the sun baking and you just and you also get all the flies landing in it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's not as romantic in real life as it sounds painting outside you, you get all the mosquitoes and the flies and the the light's changing constantly too. And everything's drying. 
Yeah, I think oils. But then the problem with oils is then you've got to carry it upright because if you put it in a backpack, <laughs> it's going yeah, to be didn't... like. They didn't have a mini mini they didn't have a minivan just to pack it all in. I know. So then I, I'm just curious how they then hiked with a wet oil painting. Like how did they do that? Because it would take weeks to dry. How come it didn't end up a big sloppy mess when they got back to the tent? Yeah. <laughs> um Julie, I'm having trouble getting that first green um i keep it looks too blue can i just add a dash of gray or something in it it looks I too think... blue just more yellow um yellow okay yeah. thank you um you you could try putting a tiny bit of white with it but i would say more yellow I'm just painting my edges now so that I don't have to worry about them later to try and color match. What I like about painting on wood is you, you can see the grain when you paint and sometimes I like to leave it a little bit thinner the paint so I'm using the grain to you know make it look like water. I should have really painted it the other way so the lines were going in line with the trees but it still looks pretty cool. So just for your reference, I'm going to quickly screen share the original again. In that image, the greens to my eyes look more olive -y than blue green. Like the water looks more blue green, but that mid lower mid ground that we were discussing before has lost just on my screen. It shows you what how colors can change with different uh, sources. Yeah, yeah. Because if you have a look at If you have a look at this one that I painted, I, I, I wanted it to be a bit richer, this one. But this is why we're just going to sketch in the basic shapes, because then you can make, I want you to be playful with this piece and, you know, change, add, change, have fun with mixing the greens. You know, you can, you, you now have the color strips, you know how to make the greens that you want, you know, have some fun with it, be really playful. We're just getting rid of white canvas right now. So if you want to make them more olivey, you've got your little recipe card of how to do it. thought this would be a really good one to just 
play with all of the different greens you can you can create. So if you have a look at this one with the see all of the kind of bushes in the background, I've, I've used lots of different greens for all these the layers of the bushes. So we're going to start with some really light ones at the back, but you know really play with it like anything goes really. Um, as long as you, you, the lighter ones are behind and the darker ones are in front on the horizon line. You can mix any greens that you like. Okay, so we're going to introduce our yellow ochre. So we're going to use a lot of white. Yellow ochre. And a little bit of Payne's gray. Um, the brush you can use, you can stick with your three quarter inch flat, or if you want to switch to a smaller filbert, it's totally up to you. I'm going to keep my three quarter inch flat because I'm on a 10 by 10 and I just want to get it covered. I'm going to get out my paint gray. Can you show us what we're doing with the, this color now, like on, on the real painting? Maybe a second. Okay. I don't have my big screen today, so I'm <laughs> doing a lot of flicking back and forth. Can everybody see the original? Yeah, so the yellow ochre with the white and a bit of paint gray, which part of it are you, uh, is it representing? Uh, can you see my mouse? Yes. So you see this line here? Yeah. We're mm -hmm. going to create a background along here. So the main emphasis, the lightest part is here in this little space here. So our light's coming down this way. There's a little bit of an opening in the trees here. So this is where we're going to have our white and our mainly yellow oak with a little touch of paint gray. Um, and then we're going to, as we transition over to this side, we're going to add a little bit of the color we used for the grass here. So a little bit of ultramarine into the mix. But at any point you want to just have some fun with the colors, you know, feel free to change it. So I'm getting out my gray and my yellow ochre. I'll leave that up for a little bit while I just get my paints out.
Does everybody have a bit of cadmium yellow still on their palette? Let's add a little bit of cadmium yellow into the mix. So this is my yellow ochre, tiny bit of Payne's gray and white. Let's add a tiny bit of cad yellow in just to brighten up a little bit, that's better. Okay, so I'm gonna dab a bit of a kind of very distant tree line. So it's about just beyond halfway up my canvas. I'm kind of just dabbing. I am going to leave a little bit of my blue sky showing through. And then I'm going to bring in a little bit of that green color that we used for the grass. as I move to the left. Sorry, we just lost Wi-Fi there for a second. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Hope it didn't pass you too hard without me. <laughs> okay, so all I was saying was I was adding in a tiny bit of that green into this mix that I used for the bottom and I'm taking it across. So I'm leaving a little bit of white space shining through. Well, the, the sky color. Basically. I'm just stopping. Julie, my I don't have any brush technique. I you're not just dabbing. You're doing something more complicated. What, what can you just describe the motion you're and, and and are you going light on very light onto the canvas in terms of pressure? Yeah, quite light with pressure. And I'm just changing direction. So I'm dabbing, but changing direction. So I'm kind of doing this with the brush um, to create space. This layer, you don't really need to worry about too much because most of it's going to be covered. It's only going to be a little bit hanging out. But yeah, if I do it slowly down here, I'm kind of what, just- What color are you got on your brush. brush now? So this is- white and yellow ochre and i've just brought in a little bit of that green over towards the left hand side the same green that i used down here oh so the green that you mixed um julie can you pin yourself we're, we're um we're getting whoever speaks last is the speaker 
That's because my Wi-Fi dropped out. It's kind of reset itself, apologies. So don't worry about taking it too much all the way down because we're going to be putting some more colors on anyway. So all I've done is I've worked with white, yellow ochre, a very tiny amount of paint gray. Um, I didn't want to have a block of color. So I have, every time I go back to my palette, I just have a slightly different proportion of green or yellow or white so that it's a little bit varied. So on the left hand side, I'll use more green and I'm gonna do this slowly so you can see the technique. I'm using a brush that's fairly old and the bristles are quite separated. I'm not worried about going too far down because I'm going to cover this with a darker green anyway. So this is the same green I used for the bottom here. Again, I'll, I'll do this slowly so you can see. Just building up in layers, letting some of that yellow ochre shine through. Changing directions with my brush. So if you have brushes that get a little bit worn, don't throw them away because they can be repurposed. They make great cloud brushes. Great brushes for doing foliage. Great brushes for doing foliage. So play with that color mixture with white, yellow ochre, and the green that you made. And just try doing some sections, slightly different color variations, just to kind of have a little bit of fun with it. When you look at shrubbery through the trees, it's not all the same color, it varies. Um, Julie, just a question on style. Yeah. Like, let's say someone wants to uh, experiment with a more stylized version. Go for it. Then would you simplify that? Like, would yeah. you, you like? Would you have more one solid tone? In what, I would. What you... um, I would still vary the blend. So I'll show you the other. I'm going to screen share the other one that I did. Um, I mean, bear in mind, this is bright colors. Um, okay. So have a look at this one and you can, can you see the greens in the background? So this is the area we're working on right now. I still, even though it's a block shape, I still varied the tone. So it's darker as it gets closer to the horizon and it's lighter. You see, I just added more white as it got closer to the sky. So it's a stylized shape, but it's it still has va different values within that shape. Does that answer your question? Uh, Julie, yeah. I'm just wondering, 
why are we doing more of the green toward the lights light um the light source i, I might have thought it would be more on the lighter tones okay so but, have a look at the angle so can you see my mouse yeah uh no actually i can't can you move it uh can you, move it? Can you see it uh no actually i just see your hands you can't is anybody see else is is it just me i can only see hands you know i'm not screen sharing i can see it julie it's on the screen share leanne oh um Are you on oh, an dear. iPad or a phone? No, I'm on a laptop. It says host disabled participant screen sharing. What? Did you disable it from here? Did I oh, do I something? Gonna... <laughs> can everybody else see my screen? I can see it. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> All right, well I'll, I'll stop sharing and share. Um, I'll just describe it. Okay. So the light is coming from the top left-hand corner towards the bottom right-hand corner like this. So it's coming this way. There's also foliage and trees up here. So it's where the light catches. So it's catching here. Oh, so I see. Right okay. Because it's coming this way. It's traveling down. Oh, okay. I have to lighten it up. I see now. Yeah. yeah thank you. That's very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I see now where the light, I have to follow and make that lighter, more of the yeah. white mixture so that's there. Why, that's why we did light here. It's traveling to here and it's ending up here. Okay. I got it. Thank yeah, you sorry. for clarifying that. Uh, Julie, not to belabor the stylized style, I, I see that you did have quite a bit of color variation. Yeah. But if one wants to experiment with being more stylized, is a general rule, would you say the color variation is more geometrically yeah. applied than yeah. impressionistically applied? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's... It's your style. It's however, it, there's no rules really, because every artist is different. So, whichever you enjoy. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to learn to be less representational and more interpretive. And I don't know how to do it. Okay, do you want me to flick back to the Screen it's turn. okay. I was just if, if you were as you were maybe going through the painting to just just in words, just say how you might differ it if you were doing it more stylized, if you think of it. Well, we are going to do a stylized painting later on where I'm going to show you a photograph and I'm going to show you how I how I um, simplify it into block shapes. Um, oh great okay i'll hold back on questions that would be great i love that okay that. yeah so that's I, great if i so know I, that's coming so we're gonna do we're gonna do a a block stylized it's a it's a kind of winter scene like an icy scene and it's gonna be very much blocking in shapes and i think that will answer all of your questions when we do that technique if that's and okay yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you. It's, it's one of my favorite ways of painting. So when we do it, I think, um, you know, you'll really enjoy it. It's uh, ever since I went to see Lauren Harris's later work at the McMichael Gallery, I just fell in love with that style. And um, it's it's a real it's a really interesting way to to look at paintings to just block in shapes and it has its challenges as well because then you have to get your lines really sharp and neat um and you you also want to have a very you know thick paint technique like you you need to make sure you don't have any canvas showing through or you know it's not as forgiving um so it has different challenges how are we doing with this? Are we ready to move on to some more greens? 
I don't want to rush ahead if anybody's still working on this. Okay. So do you remember that green that we made for the bottom here? We're going to add more paint gray into the mix. So we're going to actually going to be using everything on our palette. We're going to be using yellow ochre, a little bit of cadmium yellow, ultramarine and paint gray. So we're going to use all four colors. The easiest way to do it is to start with the green and add the paint gray later. So we're going to take some yellow ochre. This is my original green. So this is my ultramarine and my cadmium yellow. So if you already have some of that left, you could just add yellow ochre straight into it, but I'm going to mix it from scratch just to show you. So I've got my yellow ochre. I'm bringing in a bit of my cad yellow. I actually need to get some more of that. So yellow ochre with a little bit of cadmium yellow. Okay, ultramarine. I never seem to have anything left over after we <laughs> painted part of it, you know? Yeah. I can't, I can't use it again. I have to- No, redo. I didn't have any left over either. That's why I'm making more. That means you're not wasting paint. You're using exactly what you need. <laughs> well, I don't have enough of what I need. That's the problem. Okay. So I have my yellow ochre. I have my cad yellow. I have a bit of ultramarine. So you see this is more of an opaque mossy green because of the yellow ochre. This is more of a blue green, clearer, like more transparent green. This is more of a mossy green. We're gonna apply this first, then we're gonna add another layer with paint gray in. So for now, just yellow ochre, cadmium yellow and ultramarine. If you want to switch to a smaller brush, you can do, or you can just stay with me for now. Um, so I'm actually just using the corner of the brush to start. Would an angle brush be helpful? Um, you can do, try it. Um, I don't use an angle brush very often unless I'm painting some very precise shapes. I just use, um, cause I like this brush because when I want to fill in a large area, I can immediately switch to the flat part. I don't need to change brushes. This is one of my favorite brushes cause I feel like it's so versatile. So you see how I'm leaving some of the space in between. See, at the bottom, I want it to be denser. So this is where I can immediately switch to the flat part of the brush without having to change brushes. So that's why I'm not using it. I know a lot of artists who use the angle brushes and really like them. So I'm creating kind of a little shrub here. I want all of them to be slightly different colors. So let's start with this one. Oh, excuse me. Many, many <laughs> Julie. Yeah. I'm still catching up. So is this the same green as the very bottom green? So this is yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, and ultramarine. 
So it's a little bit more mossy than oh, this. Okay. This is just our base layer. We're going to add to this, but we were just blocking in white canvas to create this. Okay. So this okay. was just a foundation that's going to come through in areas, but we're going to add a lot more layers onto this one. Um, okay. So this is because we want to link to the yellow ochre we've put here on the background bushes. We're adding yellow ochre into the mix. So it's basically what we did before plus yellow ochre to make it a little bit more mossy. Okay. Like olivey kind of. Yeah. Olivey. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Olive is probably a better way of describing it. So I'm leaving some white space and I'm just varying using the corner of the brush and the whole brush to get different shapes. But um, Susan, in answer to your question, if you wanted to make this more of a stylized piece, you could just draw in a shape without showing any of these brush techniques. You could just block in a you know, more of a roundy shape, if you want to do more of a stylized approach. Okay. Go for it, I'd love to see it. But after we do the, um, the colorful, Piece. We're going to be doing the um, stylized piece. When I've laid down a color in one area, I like to bring it into another area while I still have it on my brush or I still have a little bit left. So if you wanted to, once you've completed this little area, um, you can bring a little bit of that green over to the grass. So leaving some of the original green underneath, but you could just put a little patch of it. You know, just to create some shadows. different foliage on the ground. So we want to break up this ground. We don't want it to be flat. We always tend to put it in three different Places, so I might put a little bit over here too. Find if you put colors down in threes, it just reads better as a painting. Same mixture, but we're just going to add a little bit of paint gray to it. So if you need to make more. Just a reminder, it's cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, and ultramarine. We're just going to add a little bit of paint gray in it. OK. So I am going to drop the horizon line slightly because I want this to appear to be a tiny bit closer. So what I'm going to do is just dab just a tiny bit lower and overlap the, the shrub in front. Can you see that where I've just lowered the horizon a little bit? And then, because this is darker, 
Again, I'm going to leave a little bit of light shining through. I'm using the corner of my three quarter inch brush. When I get to the right hand corner, I'm going to make this area taller. Starting to look a little bit like a forest. <laughs> As things get closer to the horizon line in the forest, they are a little bit darker. So you could put almost pure Payne's gray just along the horizon line. Just so it's darker right on that. See how I'm doing it just in the, just on the horizon line, just kind of almost like a pure Payne's gray. Don't know what that's showing up on the camera. <laughs> 